welcome to season two of The Fish Vet Files. I am your host, Dr. Jesse Sanders, owner, chief veterinarian of Aquatic Veterinary Services and board certified fish veterinarian. So today is actually going to be an accumulation of cases that are centered on products that I would never buy as a fish veterinarian because they do not help and can cause terrible things to happen. So starting out with these lovely gel bio balls. So these are essentially bacterial colonies in jello form that will kind of help break down slowly in your aquarium and help cycle your tank. Do fish actually need these bacterial products for any fish, tank, pond? The answer is no. These bacterial products are pretty much a waste of money no matter what form they come in. When you are starting your next using these bacterial products. But in particular, these balls, if you have a bottom feeding fish with a fairly large mouth, like a goldfish, they're going to be rooting through the substrate, looking for every little morsel of food that they missed, and they're going to think these balls are delicious and suck it in. But unfortunately, once they get it in their mouth, they can't get it out again. So you have a gel substance that's now stuck in your fish's mouth. They can't eat. They can breathe, kind of, like a third of the capacity, but they're not going to be eating. So we've seen this happen now in two, two goldfish, one of which was so small, I could not get the thing out of his mouth. So unfortunately, he needed to be euthanized because we just we couldn't get it out. This other guy was a little bit more lucky. So he was a little bit larger. But you can see the size of the fish relative to the ball that I pulled out of his mouth. So please, do not use these products. They are a health hazard to fish. You do not need to add bacteria to your tank, your pond, ever. The products that are on the shelf, if they're even alive, are not the right colonies for your tank. There's one product that will speed things up maybe a tiny, tiny bit. But other than that, it's not worth the money. Save it for paying your veterinarian to come out for an annual health check. So in addition to that, we have lots of dechlorinators with their magical powers. So one of the primary products that you might see is this lovely bottle that has aloe to help their slime coat. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, there has been a paper published on this actually defuting that fact. And if you use that product in addition to another dechlorinator and another dechlorinator that all have these ammonia binding compounds, again, the ammonia binders are there to help if you have chloramine water, which is chlorine plus ammonia. So it will help get rid of that ammonia. Again, your system should be taking care of it because it's such a tiny amount, but you only need one product. And if you keep adding these ammonia binders, essentially, like our first problem, you're going to stall out your tank into new tank syndrome forever. Because essentially, you've bound up the ammonia that your bacterial colonies need to survive. And then with these products, they're going to reach a certain level where they just can't be bound up anymore. Again, this is chemical equations. It's, it's going to bounce around. So you have this essentially ammonia ticking time bomb in your tank that could be releasing ammonia at any interval that it desires. It depends on the product, it depends on how you used it, it depends on lots of other things in your tank. 
But if you're using any of these products, you need one, just, just one. And it's only for the volume of new water that you are bringing in. It works fairly quickly. We're talking within seconds, maybe a minute, if you got a really large volume of water, but you only need one, just one. And the one that I use is this guy right here. And we're not paid by these companies at all, which is why we're not saying exactly what it is, but you know what it is. We'll leave links in the description below if you actually want to go just buy this one. But please, just use one. Because we have had patients, like this tiny, tiny goldfish, um, had a separate buoyancy issue that we were concerned might be caused by the water chemistry, but wanted to confirm. So again, radiographs looking for buoyancy issues. She's a little tiny orange gumdrop that's down on the plate. Uh, yes, you can do radiographs in very, very tiny fish. But it took us, well, it took the owner. We, I mean, we just told her what was going on. It took her months to get his little tank sorted out. So again, new tank syndrome. Nobody wants to talk about it. It takes six to eight, excuse me, four to six weeks to get everything to go right. And cycling your tank is not an empty tank with no fish and no bacteria. There's just, that's not cycling. Cycling is the process of growing your bacterial colonies in your filter, in your substrate, just everywhere in your environment, in order to process the fish's primary waste of ammonia. But yeah, she's got tons of articles on that. So we will be finishing our products that I would never buy rant with some of the most common first line of defense products for any fish issues, this line of medication. Again, there has been a published study that shows that this stuff doesn't work. Not at all. Again, it, it's, it's theory is somewhat sound. But again, they've done tests with this product. And it doesn't do anything except make your water smell a little funky. It's not going to hurt your fish to add, but it's not going to help them at all. And the amount of, <laughs> the amount of clients that we see using this just... Oh, I should have brought stock because they think this is going to help and it doesn't. It might make you do some more water changes, which could certainly hurt, help out whatever other underlying issue you have going on. But this is not going to help your fish overall. Just say So save, save your money, do some water changes, pay your vet to come out and tell you what's going on. But anyway, these are our lovely products. That we do not recommend you buying, save your money. It's going to take some time and patience to get that system going. And if you have a sick fish, please call your veterinarian. Um, if your veterinarian prescribes and these products, um, they're, they're, no. Just tell them to call me because I'm going to tell them, no, your vet should not be prescribing these. These do nothing, <laughs> nothing whatsoever. If your fish needs legitimate medication, uh, there's much, 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 better options. Is it a little bit more money? Yes. Yes, it is. Paying for a professional will be more expensive. But again, for all of you who are professional, you know, just not just doctors, but teachers, lawyers, working in a coffee shop, you, again, you're going to get what you pay for. If you want the cheap dollar coffee from the gas station versus the nice coffee from the local beanery, you're going to pay more for that. But I, I guarantee you the coffee is going to be more expensive. But you might not care and you'd rather just get the cheaper stuff, which is which is fine. But if, when it comes to pet ownership, you have brought these animals into your house. They cannot escape. Not a cat or a dog that can run for it if given the opportunity. These fish cannot escape. So please, be a responsible pet owner. Do your research. Plan in advance. Fish are not maintenance for your pets. They take just as much work as a cat or a dog. Maybe not a horse, but any other indoor pet. Fish will require you to make their environment the way that they need it to be in order to survive. So, end rant. Thank you very much for joining us for this episode of the Fish Vet Files, and we will see you next week.